From the base of my stairs, I could hear my attic door being opened. I heard the springs expand. I heard the ladder be unfolded. And I could hear people scuffling up the ladder into my attic. So I decided I was not going to call the police this time. I'll handle the situation myself. I yelled, I know you're in my home. I could hear you open the attic door. I just told them in no uncertain terms, it's time for you to go. I said, you have two options. You can go out the balcony and jump off, or I'm going to go out in the parking lot area, and you can walk out the front door. I said, I believe in second chances. Here's your chance. My main goal at that point, maybe as dumb as it was, I wanted to see where they went. They don't want to be seen. They want to be a shadow. They want to stay that way. They don't want you to see their face. That puts the end to everything they're doing. I'm on the street side. They're on the water side at this point. I, I could hear them climbing around from my balcony to my neighbor's balcony on the end. So they chose the option to climb onto my neighbor's balcony and hang off of his, I guess, and drop down the lower deck. And I heard them boom, 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 three right in a row. At that point, I was so mad, I couldn't stand it anymore. So I kind of just moved over enough behind the, the shrubbery and the palm trees just to where I could see through them a little bit, but they couldn't see me. So I watched them climb up on the roof of the building next door. I don't know if they went actually went into that townhouse. My neighbors are only there about every three to six months, so they, they were always empty. So it was a couple days later, and I stopped by the Island Moon office on Padre Island. I wanted to make residents on the island aware of this. I'm sitting at my desk, and Paul walks up to me and says that he found some people living in his house when he came home from Saudi Arabia. And he, he started telling me the story. And before he got very far, I said, well, this story sounds to me like it's at your house, not in my office. So I grabbed the video camera, and off we went. I do a weekly story called The Island Report for a local television affiliate once a week. I do mostly light stuff, but I also do hard news when the situation warrants. The interest to me is if 30% of the homes on the island are not occupied full time, this could happen in any one of these houses. As you drive down the central street, the houses on both sides are on the water, so essentially it's a dead end street. We pulled up in front and my first thought was, I can see why they picked this place. It's at the end of a cul-de-sac. It's got a covered walkway that if you went in here at night and the light wasn't on, no one would know you were there. As we walked into the house, uh, he started showing me where he was standing when he first heard noises upstairs. After we went through my townhouse and I showed him what happened, we went next door because I thought they might have been inside my neighbor's house. I'm not sure if they were. My building has five units in. I think there has six. But they're about 20, 25 feet apart. And that, that man's uh, unit is on the very end. So he's got windows on three sides. And he had his camera rolling, and we knocked on that door. <laughs> See if we get a response. Of course, we didn't. But the one thing we both noticed almost simultaneously was the blinds, all the blinds all the way around three sides of that particular townhouse were all the exact same angle. Not only closed, not only open, just enough where if you were inside, you could see out, but you could not see in. You could see maybe an eighth of an inch or so between the blinds. Normally, if somebody's not staying there, they just go ahead and close them. And through those blinds, you could see my entire end of the street, my parking area, the side area, the canal area, up and down both sides of the canal. I'm thinking maybe they just saw my, my vehicle was gone and they thought I had left back to the airport to Saudi Arabia or something. So while I'm talking to Paul out in front of the house, a lady pulls up in a pickup truck and Paul tells me that she lives down the street. So I went over and interviewed her and she said that she had seen people coming and going on the water side of the house in a kayak, taking great pains not to make any noise, to be very careful about how they paddled the kayak and not talking amongst themselves as they made their way down the canal.